This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, hey, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Disney Dance Costume Evolutions. This thing on? Hey, hey, welcome. Hey, did I ever tell you about the man who put a light bulb in his nose? He was lightheaded. Waka waka. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, did I tell you about the guy who put a sweater on his dog? He had a chilly dog. Whoa, waka waka. <laughs> Brian Henson once remarked that Fozzie Bear is always telling terrible jokes, but he's trying so hard that you've just gotta love him. And you know what? Isn't that why you're here? Isn't that why you love me? I'm like theme park Fozzie Bear. <laughs> and as you know, Kenny and I are on a quest to cover every Muppet here on the Distory Dan channel. We've done Kermit, we've done Piggy, we've done Gonzo. And so now it's time for the fan requested Fozzie Bear. That's right, let's get into it. Let's, this is gonna be unbearable. If you could just bear with me, I'll see how soon we can get bearing, get our bearings. All right, this is going too long. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> Frank Oz was just a teenager when he joined Jim Henson's troop of puppeteers. Jim was wildly impressed with his puppeteering talents and was quick to scoop him up and put him to work across many of his early projects. When it came time for Sesame Street to begin shooting, Oz had a bunch of roles under his belt, including Bert, Grover, and Cookie Monster, proving how extremely talented he was. So when the Muppets finally got their own show, it was imperative that Jim give Frank an opportunity to stretch his wings and show off his puppeteering and comedy chops. In total, Frank Oz ended up with at least six iconic Muppets sharing his arm, like Miss Piggy or Animal. But one of the new characters proved to be the trickiest of all to figure out, the bear, Fozzie. Who would this new bear be? Muppet players on stage, please. Muppet players on stage. Oh, 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 oh. Am, I, am I a Muppet player? Uh, no, you're a Radio City Rocket. Uh. Of course you're a Muppet oh, player. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> The earliest version of Fozzie actually comes from the first two pilot episodes of The Muppet Show, filmed in 1976. The pilot episodes featured a sketch called Cowboy Time, which was a Western sketch that starred a character named Kid Fozzie. And now while this looks like Fozzie, this is a pretty strong departure from where they would end up with Fozzie's character. It's a very deep, very cowboy voice. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. I'm a desperate bear, ready for desperate measures. But Fozzie is instantly recognizable in this form. His head is a triangular shape and is what is known as a pinhead puppet that has a very wide mouth across the base and goes up to a very pointy head. Fozzie Bear operates a lot like Cookie Monster in a lot of ways. You have a very sculpted formed head and chest, and then otherwise you have a very large amount of fabric underneath it that matches the fabric of the character. It's all brown shaggy fabric with long armed gloves. So two puppeteers can fit inside of this character. So you have Frank Oz puppeteering Fozzie's mouth while also, you know, gesturing with the hands. And then he has a second puppeteer next to him operating the other hand. They loved putting mechanics in the head of Fozzie. And here we see the first one. In his cheeks, he has a balloon mechanism that allows him to smile or frown. Fozzie's face just changed shape. It's so wild, isn't it? Okay, now to explain away Kid Fozzie. After filming the first two episodes of The Muppets with hosts Juliet Prowse and Connie Stevens, Jim and the team got feedback from the studio that some of the characters and jokes were just not clicking. The show wasn't working. Plus, Frank Oz really hadn't fully fleshed out the voice of persona of Fozzie, so that's why he has this odd, low voice. He was still workshopping the character. I don't know, maybe Fozzie sounds a little dull here. I, I, don't, I don't like the voice. But to correct the initial criticism of the show, Jim and the crew went back, reshot, retooled, and edited down some scenes and bits, and that that is when Frank finally found Fozzie's voice. So to use the sketch right before the scene happens in the show, Fozzie's backstage prepping and he says to Kermit, Hey, uh, does this sound like John Wayne? Thus establishing why Fozzie has chosen to use such an odd specific voice. The hat is different though. Like back, you can tell so clearly this is a pickup because the hat Fozzie is wearing when he's like, do you like my job? Then he goes out onto the set and it's a, he's, he's dressed differently. One of my favorite Fozzie tidbits is the earliest argument about Fozzie is where did he get his name? And I like a lot of people are like, oh, it's obvious Frank Oz F 
dot Oz Foz Fozzie, right? That's one of the big theories, but really, if you look a little bit deeper, you find out that Fozzie was constructed by none other than a man named Foz Fazakas, which is a very specific name. And thanks to the gift of old men on Twitter, Frank Oz was able to actually confirm that, in fact, Fozzie is named Fozzie because of Foz Fazakas. Like one of the three only good things to come out of old white guys on Twitter. <laughs> Waka waka. <laughs> Prices are so high, yesterday I bought a pound of hamburger and had to have a cosigner. <laughs> Outside of the original Kid Fozzie puppet, the rest of Fozzie Bear season one Muppet Show had a very specific mechanic that allowed him to wiggle his ears. Fozzie has this big, tall head, so it allows for lots of mechanisms to be shoved in there. We saw the balloon mechanism, now he has an ear wiggle mechanism. And these ear wiggles change from year to year. They wiggle fast sometimes, they wiggle slow sometimes. It's a very dynamic tool that gives Fozzie all this emotion. After the Kid Fozzie bit, we really didn't see the balloon mechanism. That just went away. Season one Fozzie is like more embarrassing than he is charming with all of his bad comedy and audience kind of reactions. It took Jerry Jewell and Frank Oz literally the entire first season to figure out that they needed to inject Fozzie Bear with unrelenting optimism in the face of all of his obstacles. And that joy that Fozzie has when he's backstage, despite how bad of a comedian he is, makes him so much more relatable. We ourselves are faced with so many failures, and yet we pick ourselves back up. Okay, any other impressions? Impressions, huh? Yeah, we'd like to see an impression of a bear leaving a stage. <laughs> and Stadler and Waldorf are interesting, and they give Fozzie, man, the hardest time ever. They were the it, they were the original tea servers. They were the original shade throwers. They were the original Karens. These Statler and Waldorfs. Oh my God. Could you imagine like sitting across from them in a diner or something? Intolerable, these two men. Intolerable. <laughs> Season two, Fozzie Bear is brighter. He's lighter. He's more effervescent. And literally, he is a, now a shade brighter. He's orange now. He's not this like dark brown. He's like this bright orange. He has a thinner head now and uh, he loses those pronounced cheeks because we took that balloon mechanism out of the puppet. And so now everything's a little bit slimmer. And because we've changed his fur to a light orange instead of a dark brown, boy, does he have eyebrows now. I mean, my, my brother has two caterpillars crawling across his face. Those are some brows, bro. Plus, in the endless pursuit to make this bear as complicated as possible, we added a new mechanism in the second season that allowed his eyebrows to move that we barely use because he's always wearing his hat and his eyebrows moving is essentially useless. You can't really tell when he's wearing his hat. So there's like one scene in episode six where he's not wearing a hat. We're like, oh, now's the moment. Wiggle his eyebrows. And they did. And everyone's like, oh, I missed it because it doesn't really look like anything. <laughs> so for the first seven episodes, Fozzie had an eyebrow mechanism that was quickly dispatched and removed. About midway through season three of The Muppet Show, we got a new Fozzie, specifically in the Harry Belafonte episode, episode 14. Here, Fozzie gets modified. His jaw gets modified and it's much bigger. His head becomes rounder. He's got like this like round basketball head. He's like basketball Foz. I don't know. You can really see it in the Danny Kay episode, episode 16. Like it's just so round. It's w interesting, isn't it? And this lasted through season three. Waka 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 waka. Hey, you're a great crowd. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. Hey, waka waka. <laughs> but who cares how round Fozzie's head is? The Muppet movie is here. Thus means high quality, silver screen ready, close up Mr. DeVille, fancy puppets are on their way. I love when the Muppets translate to film because it means we get fancy Muppet puppets. They really refine the character, so they look good on the big screen. And Fozzie is a great example of that. Specifically, of all things, his eyebrows. Those out of control caterpillars that we've had on his face the entire Muppet show now finally are refined. He gets a bit of an eyebrow wax and they're much thinner, they're much smoother. Also, because of film stock, I don't know what the deal is, but apparently they made his fur 
even oranger than it was on The Muppet Show to deal with the saturation of how film was shot. But I don't know film, you know? I'm not Wes Anderson, you know? Well, I'm film, it isn't sweet, sweet candy of saturation, you know? Kenny, bump up the saturation, bro. And also play that sound bite, bump it up. <laughs> Kenny, when you're editing this, just Google, ooh, bump it up, and I'm sure something will pop up. <laughs> One of my favorite things about the original Muppet movie is Fozzie and his Studebaker. And I don't know if you know this or not, but the Studebaker Museum recently unearthed the original Fozzie Muppet movie Studebaker. And they reached out to my buddy and Figment puppet constructor, Adam Crudinger, to build a replica Fozzie. In fact, he's gonna send me like a, like a makeshift Fozzie head, which will make its way into this video in some way, shape or form. But he's building a Fozzie to put into the fully restored original Muppet movie Studebaker for the Studebaker Museum. I think that's so cool. And something else cool about Adam, he just wrote a book about how to build puppets. It's amazing. So quick shout out to Adam and his Puppetry 101 book. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's I know you guys always are messaging me about how to build puppets and Adam literally wrote a book about it. It's that time again. My favorite part of every Muppet evolution it's Muppet Babies time! That's right, 1984's Muppet Takes Manhattan brings you the Muppet Babies. And more specifically, Baby Fozzie. Look at that cute little pinwheel hat. His little bow tie is so little. He's got a little yellow shirt. You just want to squeeze him. Here's something crazy. I, I was always under the assumption these are sweet Muppet Babies. They're the sweetest little babies. I always thought the puppets were itty bitty. No. They're the same size as the regular puppets. They're huge. They're mutant sized Muppet babies. Look at these behind the scenes pictures. Holy Christ. <laughs> Sweet baby Broadway Jesus. Also the same year, 1984, everyone knows it, everyone loves it. It's the Muppet Show on tour. These abominations roamed around America for two years. That's right, they remounted it. There was the Muppet Show on tour, the second edition. And well, some of them are fine and Kermit's fingers are extra long and that creeps me the holy heck out. What do they do to my poor boy Fozzie? Look at, look at his face. There's too much space between his nose and lips. He's got like Bart Simpson lips, you know? He's like, no way man, waka waka. Like what is going on with this Fozzie? It's wild. It looks like he's depressurizing like Arnold Schwarzenegger did on the surface of Mars in Total Recall. Like gravity hasn't been kind to him. Maybe he was just stung by a bee. That's also something that could have happened that I need to give Fozzie more space for. Maybe Fozzie's allergic to, you know, jam or something. He ate a PB and J, I don't know. But is there something not right with his face? There's some, and there's there's plenty okay with the rest of the faces. Look at Statler and Waldorf. They look so perfectly acceptable. For the second batch of Muppet movies, which occurred around 1984 to 1988, a new Fozzie was constructed that had a significantly altered head shape. We are now back to the cone, back to that pinhead design. Fozzie's got a very distinct triangle head. We removed all of that roundness. And in fact, one of the best places to see it is in um, Muppet Family Christmas, my favorite Fozzie Muppet special. When he's singing next to the snowman, it's like round snowman head, triangle Fozzie head. It's pretty, it's pretty distinct. Also, a quick note on a Muppet Family Christmas. It's got everyone. It's got everything, including Fozzie's mom. Now Fozzie's mom is essentially just Fozzie Bear wearing drag in the same way that Minnie Mouse is essentially Mickey Mouse with eyelashes and lipstick. You know, like it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, tomato, tomato. These are two of the same thing. And we even got to meet Fozzie's mom all the way back in like season four of The Muppet Show, episode 10, I think. And she looked cute there, but here is where she's at her best. And here's where the Muppet lore gets wild. Wild, yo, things start popping off in the Muppet lore because it turns out Statler and Waldorf are Ma Foz. They're good friends. They come over for Christmas every year. This adds layers of trauma onto the existence of Fozzy that like, I'm gonna need, I need to stop making this video and go to therapy right now. This, this poor bear has been traumatized by these hecklers his entire life. And it turns out his mom sent them there. His mom bought the tickets. 
There's another Fozzie that's constructed in the late 80s that's used for even more appearances and, you know, random spots like TV shows and stuff that goes back to the rounder Fozzie head. It, we're really jumping back and forth. But this is the Fozzie that we see at Jim Henson's memorial, which is an absolute tearjerker. Yeah, it really gets me every time, Kenny. All right, let's go to the next segment. I will show you how to tell jokes. Just watch me a few times and pretty soon everyone will say, Hey, you're as funny as Fozzie Bear. Waka waka. Perhaps my favorite bit of Fozzie lore, my most obscure Fozzie lore, is the 1988 direct to VHS videotape, Hey, You're As Funny As Fozzie Bear, which was a play along interactive media series to teach kids how to be funny that allowed you to workshop jokes and learn jokes with Fozzie Bear. Wow. I mean, this is a substitute teacher video if I've ever seen one. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe it's like, I'll do it on my Patreon. I'll just sit through the whole thing and see if I come out the other side funny. He does teach you like proper joke structure and like setup and punchline. It is informative. You can tell that like the funny people behind the Muppets wrote it, but Fozzie is not funny. You know what I mean? It's like buying a pillow from the My Pillow guy. It's like, <laughs> you're asking for disappointment. 1986, Muppet Babies Live. Remember that Nightmare Fest Fozzie that I showed you with the Muppets Live on tour? Well, here's your eye bleach, baby, because it's Baby Fozzie on stage live as a walk around character. My God, he's so cuddly. He's, he's mutantly large. He's mutantly large, like uncomfortably large. All of these Muppet Babies are uncomfortably large. Uh, but what a cutie. Just want to give him a squeeze, you know? And also, your honor, if I may object for a moment, we had a critically acclaimed, incredibly successful Muppet Babies reboot, and you didn't once, you didn't once think to light the fart that was another live Muppet Babies tour. What Bluey and Blippy and and I don't know the Wiggles, they can go on tour, but not the Muppet Babies. You put the freaking giant head Spider Man on tour, but you didn't put the Muppet Babies on tour. Alice Bake Show. Where are your priorities? Give me Muppet Babies Live again. Look how cute these are. 1990, the 90s, baby, we're finally there. And the Muppets are on their way to Walt Disney World. Hey, remember all those terrible things I said about the Muppets on tour, Fozzie Bear costume uh, back in the 80s? Well, I take all that back because new sins have been committed. This thing is a monstrosity. Not only is it dopey and has gigantic lips, but now it looks like it's half asleep and is suffering from an attention deficit disorder. Like it's just, Fozzie is just, his eyes are wandering His and his Bo is so large. It is, it is not, it's beyond comically large. It's unnecessarily large. It's like large enough Adam and Eve could have used it to cover their bits. Look at this fine scarf that this dashing bear gentleman is wearing. No, look at this thing. What on earth was it zapped by Wayne Zielinski's like shrink ray? Honey, I blew up Fozzie's necktie. My favorite Muppet movie, Muppet Christmas Carol in 1992, has Fozzie Bear playing Fozzie Wig. And uh, he's entering his wig era. This is Fozzie's wig era. He's so dashing. You got young Fozzie Wig, you got old Fozzie Wig. He's so darn cute. What I like about young Fozzie Wig to old Fozzie Wig is that they mute his fur down and make him look older and like aged and ragged versus like the regular orange Fozzie you're used to seeing. And I like that. I like that little bit of storytelling with just the color of the fur they use. <laughs> Ooh, it's time, my friends, for a bit of petrifying puppets. Kenny apparently has childhood trauma from any time a Muppet is shown standing up on screen. <laughs> you know what? I get it. And you know, I know why. It's because of, it's because of Terror Piggy on roller skates. Like when she's in the, the park. Oh my gosh. The thickness of her legs was unsettling. I also agree. Freestanding Muppets. Hard pass, sir. Who is operating that puppet? Someone tell me. How was that demon thing given life? We continue with Fozzie's wig era in 1995 with Muppets Treasure Island. He of course plays Squire Trelawney, who of course has a man who lives on his finger named Mr. Bimbo, who of course also has been to the moon twice. I love this Fozzie. 
It's it's iconic Fozzie. One of the best Fozzies really highlights the pin cone-shaped head sculpt. Like you can clear as day see how triangular Fozzie's head is when it's wrapped with a Victorian wig. Fozzie is reconstructed once again in the late 90s for another series of Muppet films such as Muppets from Space and the TV show Muppets Tonight. Um, I like this Fozzie, he's cute. He's, he's, you know, he looks more like classic Muppet movie Fozzie. It's just very back to roots. 2002, one of my favorite Muppet Christmas movies, a very Muppet Christmas movie, has Fozzie served two ways. First, a Moulin Rouge Fozzie bear that's got a whole Harold Ziedler energy, which I of course love. But then my favorite alternate reality Fozzie ever is Grinch Fozzie. Oh uh, my God, this is hilarious. Um, I love Grinch Fozzie. He looks amazing. I wish that I could meet him at Christmas time every year in the parks. It seems like just a home run. And I'm like, I'm like appalled that we're not doing it. This of course is the time in which Frank Oz is just like, peace y'all. Uh, Disney was tired of working with them and Frankie don't do direct to DVD specials. And so Frank was out and Eric Jacobson was in. At this point, Eric Jacobson had been playing a couple of Frank Oz's characters on Sesame Street since like 1999. Eric had been Bert and Grover and there was no drama or controversy really with how they sounded. More so who was playing Fozzie was the controversy, but not the voice like we have right now with the discussion about Matt Vogel with Kermit and people really having a hard time adjusting to his new voice. Not something he had to deal with here because Eric Jacobson really slid right into that Frank Oz vocal track and nailed it. You can follow the Yellow Brick Road all the way to 2005's The Muppet Wizard of Oz. I love this movie. A lot of people hate it, but I love it. I love when the Muppets do adaptations of things. It makes me so happy. And Muppet Wizard of Oz is one of them. And I love, uh, I love Cowardly Lion Fozzie Bear. Back to his wig era, of course. I love a lion Fozzie. Oh, and hey, fun fact, your first peek at Lion Fozzie actually came from that direct of VHS. You're as funny as Fozzie Bear. Fozzie Bear here with the number one rule of comedy, never tell jokes while ice skating. You wanna know why? Cause you don't wanna be out there if the ice cracks up. Ah, oh, wait, 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 I got another one. Uh, uh, speaking of ice, what do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? <laughs> Frostbite! Ah! Okay, here's where I get uncomfortable with what we've done to my boy Fozzie. ABC's The Muppets reboot turns Fozzie into this weird fluffy thing. It's his eyes are shrunken down. His eyebrows are like speckled with like gray. Uh, and then his fur is like plush fur. I really don't like it. Uh, it's too clean and bright for a bad comedian. Now, most recently in 2022, we have the Muppets Haunted Mansion special, which of course featured Gazi the Hatbox Bear. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, wait, I haven't told my best joke. What happens if you don't pay your exorcism bill? You get repossessed. Shaka waka. <laughs> Man, I love seeing the spooky hatbox ghost holding the rubber chicken. I think that's hilarious. That's so funny to me. And uh, I like spooky Fozzie with teeth. I mean, you want to make Fozzie spooky, give him teeth, man. Fozzie Bear with teeth is unsettling. It's like E.T., like when he screams in the cornfield and he has just dentures and it's just stuff that'll make you lose sleep at night. All right, you're going to see those bear teeth in your dreams. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Have you had enough chuckles yet? Well, I've got one more for you. Chucklekingdom.com, a brand new website I'm building thanks to my friends at Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with fully integrated commenting systems that support threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. 
These new third-party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. ChuckleKingdom.com is a super serious place full of super serious t-shirts for super serious theme park fans. I partnered up with my favorite artist, Jess Siswick, to make a variety of theme park inspired apparel and other merchandise. So all of these Squarespace extensions are gonna be super vital to me as I begin to rule the Chuckle Kingdom. Cause I'm the Chuckle Papa. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's all Papa could ask for. Wink. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Waka waka, well, there you go. The Fozzie history. This is a fun episode. I love Fozzie Bear. He's a corny comedian. Uh, just like your old uh, friend Papa Dan over here, all right? Your old cool Disney dad with his dad jokes and his cool guy hats you know, and his occasional neckties. That's not, that's not true, I don't wear a necktie at all. I don't even wear a scarf. It's too hot. I don't know how Fozzie does it. He's a bear, he's already this hairy, now he's wearing a scarf in the summer months? No thank you. Thanks for watching guys. It was super fun running down another Muppet history with you. Let me know in the comments which Muppets you want me to jump into next. What other costume characters you want me to explore? Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you visit us on the holy social media channels like Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, TikTok, Facebook, you know, all the places the NSA watches you and keeps tabs on you. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, you rock.